Hello, welcome to part 4 of my common list programming language tutorials. My name is Will and today we're going to be going over the quote spectral operator. We're going to be going over symbols as well as lists. Um, that will be pretty much it for, for now. We're going to be doing a couple of functions. Um, that's it. So let's get right to it. So, uh, the quote operator. Very simple. All it does is it takes in a Lisp form right after it. So I can go ahead and quote five. What's going to do is it's going to prevent Lisp from evaluating that form. Um, <clears throat> so for symbol five, that's kind of irrelevant because whether we evaluate five or we don't evaluate five, it's still going to be a five because it is a constant. That's similar for uh, characters. Another, the other constants I've gone over, you know, vectors, etc. Now, for what the quote oper operator actually matters is in two very important cases. One, symbols. So if we have, if Lisp encounters the symbol X, it's going to try and find a symbol with that name and it's going to get the value of it. So sometimes we do have the need for getting the symbol itself, not the value that it contains. And we'll go into that in a, just a second. And the other case is for lists. For example, if I want the list that contains zero through five, right? If I go ahead and type that into list, what it's going to try and do is it's going to find a function called zero and use these as the arguments. But sometimes we want literally the list that contains zero through five. And those are the cases where we use quote. So similarly above. Lisp also uh, declares a shorthand for using quote, and that is to use the single quote. And Keep in mind it's not the back tick, as it might be called, which is right under the tilde. Uh, that's very, very specific. Uh, and for most cases, it's going to do the same thing as a single quote. However, this is defined specifically for something else, which we'll go over when we're writing macros. Just always use a single quote for, for now. So these two can be written as just single quote that and single quote the list. Nobody ever writes out the this special operator because it just it adds more parentheses to way too many parentheses anyway. So alright. So let's demonstrate the use of symbols. Symbols are a little difficult to explain why they're important in the language. Um, as you become a better and better list programmer you kind of learn to appreciate them more and more as well as when you, you get into packages you kind of hate them a little bit but uh, overall symbols are good and so let me teach you a simple scenario for for what you would use symbols so in C say we were writing a function that can take in a command and it doesn't, and it doesn't matter what the the value of the command is uh, we're going to be using it symbolically because it <clears throat> Hmm. Well, I kind of butchered that explanation. So let's go with uh, just straight up code, which is what I do better. So we're going to define enumeration and call to command. And it's going to have print. Say that, set that equal to zero. Doesn't really matter. And we can have um, read. So what the function is going to do is, depending on what the command, it, what command it receives, it's going to do one of two things. So command do command is the name of the function here. It takes in an enum command. Let's call it C. And this is me assuming you know C. Uh, if you don't, then uh, oof, you really should learn it. It's a really great language as well. Um, anyway, so if command, if that command we took in is equal to print, we're going to do some printf. Doesn't matter what we do here.
Then we do a scanf here. So notice that in no place here do we are we ever using the fact that print is equal to zero. We're we're only using print and read for their symbolic viewpoint for the symbolic values such as uh, you know as programmers we're trying to simplify and make the the code just more readable for for both ourselves and anyone trying to inspect it 20 years in the future. So we're using these symbols purely for the fact that, uh, f just for their names that they have during the source code stage. So that's what symbol, that's one of the many uses of symbols in Lisp. If we were writing that function in Lisp, we would use, inst we would write it as uh, do command. By the way, the hyphen is standard or not the, is this a hyphen? I think it's a hyphen. The dash is a standard Lisp um, convention we, because Lisp is case insensitive, at least common Lisp is. So this really has the same meaning as this. So just kind of to, in standard Lisp way of doing things, we just do do command. It, and we separate we separate different words by the dash. Um, so it takes in that one argument C. And if C is equal to print, then we do some print C. Right. Um, else, if uh, C is equal to read, then we do some read. So notice here I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm only using C for its, it, its symbolic value. I don't, I don't care what the value of print is. I just care whether C is print or not. And uh, <clears throat> Notice I didn't ha I didn't have to declare any variables to to be print or not. Symbols are kind of when we go in, we'll have a probably a tutorial dedicated to symbols because they have very unique little things to them. But for now, just take them as literal constants, such as you would, for example, five or or any other thing like that. So yeah. If if we didn't use the quote, what would happen is that we would be comparing C to a variable called print, and we don't have any here. EQ, uh, just remember that I haven't actually gone over that, but you can think of it similarly to what equals equals would do in in C or in Java. Um, that's not exactly the case. For example, for numbers, you do not want to use EQ. Instead, you want to use uh, the equals operator. So this would be true, or T. Um, and for most cases, what you're going to instead do is use equal with, a, with an L. I'll probably have a single tutorial dedicated to equals because there's many different uh, ways you can compare objects. Um, but as you get more experience, you know which ones to use. Uh, just trust me, for this case, it's good to use EQ instead of equal. Alright. So now to lists. Lists are a very, a very interesting data type in that they're very convenient, they're very concise, and they allow us to express many different things. I mean, the entire Lisp syntax is kind of based on the use of, of lists, uh, other than atoms such as uh, five, etc. So, lists you can use them kind of a. Uh, a lot of times they're used as a prototyping tool when you're developing your program. Lists are very easy to use. Uh, then you kind of replace them with a more efficient data type for the for whatever it is you're doing. However, lists themselves are very useful data types and very efficient data types for certain kinds of data. So let's do. I think the best the best show of of useful list stuff is to write a couple functions, so let's do that.
So let I want to write a function called sum, which is going to take a list and it's going to add up all the numbers in it. Now for lists, before we begin with that, uh, there are two functions that are that are kind of essential. We have car of a list and we have cuter a list. Uh, what car is going to do is it's going to return to us the head of the list. So as an example, if we do car of the list ABC, this is going to evaluate to the symbol A. And if you do car of you know B, C, and this is going to evaluate to uh, B, not B. And cooter is going to give us the rest of the list. So cooter of ABC, doing way too many typos, is going to give us the list <coughs> BC. Because that, that's the list essentially we're removing the, the head element. Similarly, if we do cooter of BC, we get the list that only contains C. And uh, if you do car on nil, this is these are kind of the the special cases. Car on nil, which is the empty list, is going to evaluate to nil. And similarly, cooter of nil is going to evaluate to nil. Or this is probably the better way to. to do it because when you're dealing with lists, you want to emphasize the fact that you're dealing with lists and not true or false with no. All right, so that allows us to get at the elements of a list. So let's write that sum function. So defun sum. Let's see how much time I have here. Okay, I got a couple more minutes. So defun sum. It's going to take a list of numbers. We're just going to assume that it's a list of numbers. And uh, so there are two cases for a list. Either it's empty, either it's empty, which means that uh, sum would return just zero because uh, you know adding no numbers should ideally give us just a zero. Or we have an A, or rather, you know, uh, we do have a number and then we have more numbers. In which case we should return, you know, the whatever number we're at right now, whatever number we we have at the moment, plus the sum of the rest of the list. So that's very easy to do here. It's a simple statement uh, if statement. <coughs> The null function is going to test whether uh, the value that you give it is nil. It's going to return true if it's nil, false otherwise. So here, if we have an empty list, we just return zero. Otherwise, what we want to do is we're going to add the current element, as I said before, of list to the sum of the rest of the list. And that's it. So if we open up our REPL, got one more minute. <laughs> Just drag this in there. So sum of the list 0, 1, 2, 3. It's going to give us 6, which is the 1 plus the 2, which is 3 plus 3. And we can give it nil. Same thing. You can give it the list that contains one, etc. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut it because I, th yeah, very close. Uh, and next time we're going to go over writing a couple more list functions so you can get a little more comfortable with manipulating lists. But for the most part, it's going to be null or something else. All right, catch you later.